pick, if either team picks the Sanking or the Night Stalker right there, it allows the next team, if they don't pick this Lycan, they would allow Nubi to get the Night Stalker with um, the Lycan. So, and also, that's if they pick the Sanking. And if they can't just pick the Night Stalker either, because then it enables Lycan and Sanking as well for Nubi. So they have to take the Lycan for themselves. That's a great point. And, you know, to be specific, Night Stalker, his ultimate makes the game immediately go to nighttime and Lycan gets benefits at nighttime. So obvious synergy on the same team, but also if the opponent has the Night Stalker. So would not be surprised to see Invictus Gaming pick up the Night Stalker as Lycan and Night Stalker as a duo has been one of actually perhaps the most commonly picked pair of heroes. And Bloodseeker is a very common pick to pick against Lycan. Um, when Lycan ultis, you can ulti him with Bloodseeker, and Lycan can't really run around in the fights, which is what he really wants to do when he ultis. There's that Lycan Night Stalker talking about, PJ. Yep, it's there. And uh, I think the Darkseer might actually be a hero this game again. It looks uh, like it could be quite strong for both sides. It's okay for newbie, I guess, but if IG picks it, then Bloodseeker is qu quite a good matchup against Darkseer, right? Because mm -hmm. he can still stay on the lane, so then they can actually leave him solo and focus on the other lanes. Interesting that newbie seems to have looked at what IG did last game and said, that's a great idea, we should get these heroes. Yeah, sort of sort of deny picks, right? I think they just really like that Bloodseeker versus Lycan matchup. And yeah. I it used to be better though, uh, when the when people used to go for this kind of right click build with the mom and the armlet. Now people are going for this book and utilizing the wolves a little bit more. Yeah, that's true. So some of it is, I guess, taken away because you will still have those books running at you with the um, with the you wolves. Have to them all. Basically, what this means is that Bloodseeker or Lycan cannot depend on his ultimate form to be like doing damage throughout the game. So I think definitely going the Necro book is the way to go. That way, you know, when he does get ulted, he can still have an impact in team fights as the one position. Newbie could prepare something to help deal with those necro books. Yeah, what do you think? Is Witch Doctor is that an option, or do Witch you have something else yeah, in mind? Witch Doctor, Crystal Maiden, um, Wyvern has been one of those options that people like going against. Here's the build book. Wyvern, yeah. Wyvern sounds better than I think. Both Witch Doctor and Maiden can fall off quite quite fast, and it's not really yeah. reliable against it. Both those two might struggle up against the Roaming Night Stalker in the early game. Now, Invictus Gaming is banned at Terrorblade, and I'm not really sure how to think about that ban. Well, it's a hero that allows you to group up and push. You know, you can meta and spawn illusions, and you can go hit towers, and you can it allows your team to group up and take objectives, which a Lycan and Night Stalker aren't super great with dealing with because they don't offer a lot of team fight. Also, Lycan is a melee hero, so if Terrorblade ever gets low and Lycan's around, you can just sunder him. Yeah, I think Terrorblade is one of those carries that matches up really well against the Lycan, just because he goes for this illusion, he has very high armor, base yeah. armor, and he has that Sunder. So Lycan always has to run up to you. You kind of force this Lycan into building a Lincolns. That's really awkward for Lycan. That's something he definitely doesn't want to do. He doesn't need man Terrorblade doesn't need mana late game. No. He can also have his illusions, just kill the Necro book. So, like, auto-attack it, auto-attack it, stop auto-attacking with your main hero, let the illusions finish it off without taking that return damage. Yeah, I'm curious if uh, Nubi are going to go for some sort of illusion-based hero still. There's the CK still in the pool. If you would want to go that route, I'd suggest you do it We've in seen the a last lot of, pick, though. Yeah. I think SCCC would probably play the Bloodseeker mid. I think that's what they've done in most games. Um, it's still possible for Mugi to play Sven, which is still in the pool, right. up against the Lycan. Yeah, that is also a good pick, as Pycat was asking for, well, the good picks like against Lycan, because he can just cleave everything. Yeah, we saw EG play a lot of Lycan this tournament, and they made a priority of banning Sven whenever they had Lycan. They probably want to wait, though, so they don't have to commit the Bloodseeker to be mid. Yeah, so we had first pick on IG again this game, Newbie taking second pick and last pick once again. Yeah, expecting both teams to kind of now maybe go with their five position supports. Not, You don't want to reveal too much right now. Yes. You don't definitely. have to. And we talked about them third picking that Bloodseeker last game up against the third pick Drow. Generally, you can, f at least I, I have felt safe picking my core or my carry after I see the enemy team's carry because right. generally you want to have a good matchup f f between those two in the late game. 
Yeah, and it's also, I guess there's two two ways of doing it. You either pick it after the enemy's carry or you pick it after you see their offlaner. Because that can also be one way of dealing with it. It's definitely a tell, yeah. yeah. Hey, look, you know, this offlaner, we can solo a carry here against right. this offlaner. And he'll do well on lane and hopefully have an impact in the late game. What do you make of this tight? It's quite decent against Lycan on the on the lane, but uh, he can't really bully him out. So both is gonna farm, I guess. If Tide's a one versus one. Tide's a strange pick. He's he's actually kind of known as one of the counters to Night Stalker, because he'll he'll probably go mana boots into an early mech and potentially some Guardian Greaves, and then it, it can enable his team to walk down a lane and not have to worry about the split push problems that Night Stalker presents. Monkey King coming out again for Invictus Gaming, the Baboka special, and of course Tide Hunter just insane with it's Ravage and this, this makes me kind of think that one, I mean, the Monkey King it's is maybe a position. Is position one, right? Yeah, well, one or two, right? It could be either, okay. even three, I don't know if they've ever run that. He talked about it in his interview, right? Baboka? He yeah, said, like, oh, like, they kind of liked it as, two. yeah, they liked it as one and two, and he was like, but I can play it as well. <laughs> but it's more likely that Baboka will play the Night Stalker. All these heroes can do a lot of different things. I mean, we it's not too long ago that we saw Night Stalker being run as a three, and even you know a couple of years ago, Night Stalker got ran as a two a couple of times in the mid lane. Hey, man. Uh, Tier one, Night Stalker, safe lane? Well before my time. <laughs> and I mean, at this point, you've talked a little bit about leaving possibilities open. It's relatively clear that Earth Spirit is going to be roaming Tidehunter in the off lane. Dazzle is the hard support. Bloodseeker could go mid or could go hard carry. Yeah, we have Dazzle hiding behind the Tidehunter over here. Some nice sustain, good armor. I think they're really gearing up to five man here, and I kind of like the Winter Wyvern. He's a great D pusher, and he offers a little bit of team fight from that hard five position. Is that also to just uh, save the the person that gets uh, ruptured? Ruptured, yeah. Yeah, I mean it can definitely prevent any physical damage from coming in. Yeah, newbie don't really have the best burst damage. They have this Earth Spirits who can, you know, deal damage over time, and the Bloodseeker with the Rupture can slowly kill a hero, but they don't have the best burst right now. Yeah. Can any heroes for Invictus be reasonably run mid at this point? I think Monkey King. Yeah, Could. Monkey King, we've seen him a couple times. I think he's okay. You know, even against, generally, Bloodseeker excels against other melee heroes. Um, because he, you know, he can trade right clicks so much better. I'm curious if he actually can trade with Monkey King, though. That, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Monkey King is like a pseudo melee hero, and he stacks um, God, with whatever that third spell is called. <laughs> yeah, similarly to Mastery. Who Oh, there you go. Yeah. Oh, what do you say? The Mastery. The yeah, Mastery. Jingu, Jingu Mastery. Mastery yeah. Jingu Mastery. Jingu. Yeah, and he trades better than anybody at that point once the like the life like the life um, life game kick kicks in. Lina being banned out by newbie. Yeah, most likely. Uh, guess yeah. they want to run the Bloodseeker mid then? Definitely. Yeah. Lina destroys Bloodseeker mid. Or he can. It can yeah, be. he should, right? Uh, it's very player dependent, I think, but a good Lina would beat up on a, a good Bloodseeker, I think. Certainly looking at Invictus, Night Stalker and Monkey King, always great at roaming, getting picks. Invictus Gaming. And Invictus Gaming seems like it lacks a mid. Obviously, Monkey King could be mid, but... I would assume a range hero here. Probably for that mid lane. And same for newbie, very much so. Seems what are you thinking? Some invoker, or is uh, it too slow? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe a little more control. Right. Wow, Tinker. Oh. Tinker Lycan. Okay, trying to delay. Hmm. Yeah, late game. I would definitely give this game to IG. However, can Tinker and Winter Wyvern deep push enough to keep Newbie from going high ground? Newbie needs some sort of catch for this Tinker. Right now, they don't really have the best ways of finding him. Earth Spirit can roll off the map and scout for that guy if you have vision on him. But how do you feel about Storm Spirit? Is that the one sounds too much of a problem? Then they have to put the Bloodseeker safely, but that's still possible. I yeah, guess. I think that's fine. I They're think that could be fine. The supports will be pretty free to go, kind of do what they want. The Dazzle okay. can help out in the offlane potentially or mid. Mm -hmm. And this is the benefits of having the last pick. They get to counter this Tinker, and as we said, they can choose to put the Bloodseeker mid or safe lane, so they can actually choose. Didn't IG used to like almost first pick this Tinker? Like not too yeah, long it's ago. one of OP's, I think. like It used to be one of his really go-to heroes. There we go. There it is. Storm Spirit, one of the hardest counters to Tinker. Able to find him when he's hiding in the trees, casting those marching machines. 
Oh, interesting. An XXS on the Night Stalker. Perhaps going to see him in the offlane. Called it. He's been a real all-star. With that, the draft is now complete, and Game 3 is ready to get underway as Invictus Gaming heads in against newbies. Casters, take it away. Thank you very much, Day9, and indeed, this final match of the series. Who's going to take it? Who's going to stay in this upper bracket and make themselves one step closer to this Grand Finals here at TI? The, these two drops again, something a little different again. The yep. finishes from both sides, grabbing up their mid laners. IG with the OP Tinker, Newbie with the SCCC Storms for remaining. Throwbacks. I haven't well, seen an OP Tinker in quite a bit. So looking at Newbie's draft, uh, the Tidehunter, I've seen them actually drafted a couple times. Uh, they did it once in the group stages and then once before that, in, I don't remember which one, I think it was MDL. They tend to actually pair it with like a hero that can push really hard, like the Shadow Shaman, so then yes. they can get that group up mechanic. This time they don't really have that, but they have the Dazzle, and they have good core matchups, is the big thing that I'm looking at here. Bloodseeker, extremely good versus Lycanit. Storm, very good for finding the Tinker. That being said though, IG has comfort heroes, and they have very strong aggression in that laning phase. This Tinker, with Monkey King rotations, can heavily punish this Storm. So we'll see how, how Newbie decides to lane this one up. I mean, that's the, what do you think about Newbie's uh, start to the draft day? Grabbing the Earth Spirit, taking the Bloodseeker yep. away? I mean, they saw what IG did with it last game, and Newbie, of course, definitely a team that can utilize these two heroes to the maximum as well. Yeah, for sure. They, they like the way it worked, and they have, a, they have a very good Earth Spirit player themselves too, so why not? A hero that's looking to be very dominant in a lot of these games, just of what he provides. Makes moves around the map so fast, a lot faster than majority of heroes. Monkey King's one of those that can kind of match the speed at which he crosses the map with the rotations. A game that certainly feels, out of all the three that we've had, the hardest to call off the back of the drafts. Yeah. As both teams with a lot of potential, a lot of outs, no sort of clean cut, you know, this must be achieved to win the game. This is, you know, IG's got to stall the game, though. That's one thing. Okay. You know, they have the Wyvern, they have the Tinker to stall the game up for later, late stages. But that being said, is Newbie has great heroes to deal with that. The Tidehunter, the Ravage can be very relevant once the, you know, the, there's only like a Lycan who can really buy a BKB in this matchup, in this situation. So he's going to be that one. And the Storm Spirit is incredibly good at catching the Tinker. The best hero. I mean, that's the, they've they've got a lot of catch for this Tinker. Yeah. Ravage, Star, Earth Spirit's also super good too. Uh, Spirit, finding him. Yeah. Vision from the Dazzle in the tree line. A lot of ways of hunting him down. We'll see how well OP can pull it off. As mentioned, definitely one of his strongest areas. Ones that we've not seen to come through too many games recently, but are definitely one that Newbie should be aware of his potential on the mechanical map. I'm wondering how much KP is going to be able to get out of this bottom lane. I think Dazzle should probably start down there, since it's going to be like the Monkey King, who's very low armor, so Tidehunter can do pretty well with a secondary hero to match up and force experience. They can just do some dual lanes, Wyvern and or, um, Earth Spirit and T Dazzle just moving between the two lanes, the bottom and mid and the top and mid, just to be sure, be sure that they can secure the Storm Spirit's farms. It's the same kind of thing that we always say, you know, matching the forest, the forest movements, the Monkey King and the Earth Spirit this time will be the ones to watch. And it's a core Night Stalker, so we don't see this too often. I saw, Kez I saw Kezu played a couple times on Secret. He had some very good games on it. We'll see what XXS is able to pull off of it. It's a very different scenario when you're paired up with that Lycan, with the double Howl benefit plus Darkness. Nighttime is nighttime is the time for IG to fight. Of course, once again, this mid lane is going to be incredibly crucial you know, for both sides. OP needing to make sure he gets a good timing on that boost of travel bottom lane. But they get the gush level one. Comes in, he's being gone upon, and he'll try for the TP out. He's not going to make it. First blood for newbie. I mean, Baboka has to be so careful with those sort of plays. Monkey King with a pretty much, what, zero armor, level yep. one. He not expecting not that. that. Like, there's, there's no way you expect that, right? Like, this guy just turned and gushed you with a poison touch. It's perfect by KP and by Faith. Starting that dual aggro lane. They're going to be able to put a good amount of pressure and force the rotations from the Wyvern right away. So actually, I was kind of like forgetting because uh, we haven't seen it in too many times, but Q is on one of his signature heroes. I love Q when he's been playing this Wyvern. It's one of the ones that they played a lot when they were on C deck during TI5. And as you say, they definitely need Q as well as Boboka down here. As we've seen, a level one Monkey King in this lane can do very little against the Tide and the Dazzle. Yeah, and the beauty of when they put this pressure on it is the Bloodseeker. They want to be able to do it as much damage as possible try for that thirst. Make a go, a, a go again, but immediately with the Gut, forcing back Boboka. Now they turn towards Q. And KP, not phased at all by the harassment that these two supports are trying to throw his way. Very hard for IG to actually finish off a kill, even onto the Dazzle on the back lines of it all. Now he's got that level two. And the fact that they, uh, 
Newbie, again, as we've seen from majority of their games, and majority of the times there's the, the dual pressuring, they block the pole. So there's not a great way for IG to pull the lane back. And since Newbie's dire, you know, the dire lane meets at a better position for a KP to get more. And now Faith starts making the movements around, even stacks the Ancients to be efficient on that next rotation to help S triple C mid. And mid lane of the moment. Certainly slight edge for OP. He's getting a few denies. Oh, yeah, with Faith's presence now in the mid lane. Could look to try and turn things around a little bit. S triple C feeling a bit more confident with their haste rune. Kaka. Up on the high ground as well. Does have level two in the Earth Spirit. Could this try to look kill. to set up. They have to wait for him to like step down in the river pretty far. Yeah. Especially uh, with Q coming in from behind. He's up level Faith two. could be in some trouble here. He's gonna try and make the go if they get the burst off. It's gonna be incredibly close. At least holding them back. Still got Kaka on the side. He's very much ready to try and make something happen. So yeah, this is this is the great thing about the Bloodseeker safe lane, which a lot of teams like to do, is you, your supports can move wherever they want. They can secure it right at the start, like level one, level two, but then afterwards, putting pressure on other lanes is usually better just to make sure that Bloodseeker gets full solo experience and the thirst starts kicking in. Kaka wants to be able to find rotations, but there's not really great ways to do it, so back to top lane to pull. And Baboka gets the Jingu stacks up. He's got the Jingu mastery right now to his own KP for the time being. No, didn't quite have that level two though. Will now have it up. And certainly making it a little harder for KP to lane when he's on his own. If he doesn't have the backup from that dazzle, he certainly does have to be careful. Faith actually with a bit of an interesting wrap around here, coming right around the mid lane, gets the poison touch, the boulder smash. Flies through onto both of them with Kaka, rolling forward, looking for Q. Balance strike comes out now at the potential turnaround. They do lose the Wyvern, but it's fa in fact IG coming out on top as OP gets a double kill, and this is absolutely huge for the Tinker, getting kills like that in the first four minutes of gameplay. But Boka still having the Jingu Mastery stacks when he TPs in, so getting that extra damage on that Boundless Strike is very relevant there. 615 damage plus the Laser Rocket, just enough to push them both over the edge. And massive for a Tinker to get those sort of kills early on. It's Triple C, out of the lane for the time being as well, so OP. Still early days, but definitely looking to, to set out to be the start that he needs to get that yeah. good timing on the bots. Yeah, it's already a, quite a Tinker favored matchup, but with those rotations in, he's pulling quite far ahead as, from, uh, of SCCC as we kind of expected. Oh, they've actually got one of the new couriers. You see that? It's actually, it's actually pretty adorable. Let me go back. Slacks and Casey escorting the items up and down the mid. Now top lane, in fact, Q Burning. has got to go down bottom indeed. Burning being made. Uh, yeah, immune there with the cold embrace. In fact, Burning, is he going to be okay? Will be kicked further away from his teammates. Burning does, does have the Sal. He's actually going to be able to TP out here. Yeah, they do not have the damage to hold him in place, and he is gone. It's a long TP, but it's a safe one. Nice reaction there from Q, and he'll only go back to the tower as well. Has the Sal ready. Burning stays in lane. It's nighttime already. XXS already level four looking to get involved. They do get the scan successful though as Triple C starts to back up. But again, even if this isn't a successful attempt on S Triple C's life, it's time where he's forced out of the lane. OP absolutely soaring ahead. 31 CS against the 18 at the Storm Spirit. This mid lane Tinker, he could be on track to getting out of control this game. They have not been able to shut him down at all in this early lane. Yeah, and neither Burning, too. You know, they got the nice kill with KP and with Faith on the Monkey King, but they're not shutting down Burning whatsoever. He's completely free farming down bottom. Even though they keep walking up and doing this damage to him, he's got the three points of Feral Impulse. But now, with the rotation in... I mean, look at this, yeah. But it's I nighttime. This. They're gonna get kills almost certainly. Kaka will turn with the boulder smash, but the Brownless Strike comes out. Kaka's down. Q sniping him there from long range with the Wyvern. Oh, and Mugi actually TP's down, too, thinking that the... Fight would start like last a little bit longer so he could get some spells off, but unable to get involved now. KP makes the way toward top to get those levels, and they're gonna maybe have Mugi put the pressure since that matchup of Bloodseeker versus Lycan now. And the Bloodseeker 6 is very good. Burning certainly having to be careful. You see a TP in once again from Kaka down towards the bottom shrine, looking to join horses again with Mugi and Faith. This first nighttime is probably one of the more scary ones. Of course, since the game's all gone, Pal Pal gets stronger, but Q actually gets ruptured up. It should start be fine, though. Out. Gets under the tower, has the cold embrace. Blowbright will bring him rather low, but now TP's coming through with the boulder smash. Okay, they'll look to dive, they will get it. OP comes in, doesn't, won't have quite have enough damage on his own, really, unless with the march, actually, bringing Mugi down low, trying to close this gap. Very close. But yeah, with the three of them still there, Faith 
There's a multitude of options still available to keep his team alive. Meaning that IG can't chase down for that, so nice little play there from Newbie. Not necessarily the burning kill that they were after, but a kill nonetheless. A kill, forced reaction, and it lifts SCCC to get some experience in the mid lane. XXS putting some pressure on now. Not using the Clippers here just yet. SCCC is able to jump away, but oh, the rocket. It's going to be close, but Voka comes in with a boundless strike. He's been silenced up. He can't zip away, and he's gone. Again, more involvement for OP as XXS and Baboka help him set up for something tasty in that middle lane. It's that first night time. Got to make as much happen with it with the Howl and with the, with the Night's not burning, burning now. Burning. Ruptured again. He's on his own. I don't think there's going to be any TP support this time. He is going to try and man up. He's got the region, the Feral Post. There's the kick with the Rupture upon him. Sweet little combo there for Newbie to bring him down. IGR coming in with the wraparound though. Baboka and XXS. Maybe seeing if they can get revenge. It's a hard one for just the two of them to go for. And indeed, Kaka and Mugi keeping the distance. SCCC down here as well, just in case IG did look for that fight. But finally, Nubi getting that pick off they needed, shutting down Burning a little bit. And during all this, it, it leaves KP top, who wasn't getting the craziest amount of last hits bottom, but now absolutely free farming. Going to be building toward that mech, it does look like. And six, level 6 is online for that Ravage if they want to take some fights around it, but he wants to still just farm for a bit. And now it is daytime though, so through four minutes where Nubi has some breathing room. Definitely still, I feel the biggest issue is the Tinker. Yeah. I remember just time, time and time again in the past, so many games where teams went up against IG and Tinker, it would be first ban material. It seems like it's, uh, you know, maybe just not gotten through that much here at TI, but there's definitely been lands before where a lot of teams are absolutely terrified of OP's Tinker. He is and one of the best on it. I, I, I'm just sort of getting deja vu when he has this sort of a start. He could get absolutely out of control top lane. They found KP. XXS Baboka will go in, he'll pop the Ravage. I don't know if it's enough to save him. Already three stacks of Jingo up on him, and they'll dive down with the Boundless Strike, burst him out. TP will be cancelled, of course, by Nubi. No chance of doing anything against these three up in this top lane. As they get another pick off. Fully defensive Ravage. Moogie still parked bottom, not letting Burning get free farm under the tower. Burning's just going to the jungle. But yeah, like you said, OP, he has had those games on the Tinker, but we do have to remember, they have very good heroes to find him still. True. Storm Spirit is the best one. Bloodseeker's not, like, the best, but he's okay, and then Earth Spirit's also very high up there. So it is a very farm Tinker, but there are, there are things that they can deal with it. As long as it doesn't get too out of hand with this Night Stalker rotations. Top miss up top again, KP. Getting pressure, but Boga's gonna jump in there. They are forcing out some of these TP reactions. Kaka to come through on the Earth Spirit. So IG do hold back, but now they're ready to go. Burning's there as well with the ultimate. They're going to go straight in onto KP. KP is almost certainly going to be gone here. Kaka just has to leave, roll out, and look to escape. Burning will chase him a little bit, but a little too deep there behind that tier two. So a second death in quick succession on KP on this top lane. IG taking control of this top lane. They're pushing onto the tier one. SCCC does have an invis, also a regen room bottled. Kaka back in the neighborhood. Maybe they could try and do something to hold IG off of this push. The silence is there. Moving in, they'll get Q at least. Can't quite get the cold embrace out. Do they get anything more already? Baboka out in the tree line, TP's away, and the rest of IG will escape. So maybe not to catch anything more, but they do stop the tier one tower push. Get IG away from that top lane. IG's being pretty smart about how they just avoid the Bloodseeker. They recognize that he's they, by far the strongest hero for, on Newbie's lineup right now, so trying to punish any other ways that they can. Bots now out, 10 minute boost to travel here on the Tinker. Yeah. And they're gonna have uh, Rupture actually comes out top. This that's is pretty a deep, deep dive. Though, for... Yeah, no way that Moogie gets away with this one. He is not moving in on that. Yeah. So with Tinker with Lycan, they have the nice uh, synergy between the inv Invis Wolves when Burning does get them online. Of course, we've been seeing those come out much later, usually around like the uh, 10, 10, level 10 or level 13, depending on if you go for the three or four points in Feral Impulse. So what Mugi's game plan is here. Certainly, as we saw, getting the farm, Mugi needing to find that Radiance. Actual smoke up from SCCC and Faith. Maybe they can make something happen down bottom. At the moment, only Baboka showing on this Monkey King. Darkness gets used. Earth Spirit starts backing up the tower. Some fear there. 
but Boca might be the one who gets picked yeah, off got here. good vision around him as well with this ward. They know it's a pretty clean jump in, but Boca cannot get himself out, or can he? He's trying to keep himself alive for as long as possible. Does get the boundless strike out now. OP comes in. Quick sell, shallow grave though from Faith. Immediate with the TP out. Oh, the creep oh. finishes off. Oh, the range creep doing it there for IG. And he does get it, despite Faith's best attempt to escape. Small mistake. Killed the Invisiroon right in front of KP. Again, more action for OP to be involved in. 1500 towards that link. Again, this time. He was very far here. up top now. It looks to be a little more successful indeed. He's very far out. Maybe will find the pickoff. So didn't get anything else, but Boca is there. Level 6 at the moment on the Monkey King. noobie has got very strong team fight now, though. Ravage is online, Magnetize is ready too, Bo and the match of IG's team fight is not but there. But Boca and OP, they can blow up here as the Primal Spring will be off the mark. Jumping again, just trying to give vision upon Mugi. He'll look to try and chop down Boca from the tree line. But he just throws out the bound list. Didn't quite get the initial jump with the spring that he hoped to, to set up for a kill. As Newbie will survive, KP and Fave forcing out this middle lane. Mech very nearly. Nearly done here on KP, 100 or so away from the recipe. You can start forcing some towers off that. Important, important to get early towers versus Tinker, because then Tinker can't you know, get all that free farm from the jungle. It's going to be getting, going for that blink first, as we usually do see on the Tinker. Pretty close to that. Yeah, this is perfect timing for OP. 13 minutes and nearly having blink and boots to travel. More, more than enough for this. Oh, Nico. perfect scan coming out from Newbie. Actually, catch the rotation from IG. See how Deep XXS wants to dive under the tower. At the moment, Kaka is there hiding in the tree line, but Boca they, can scout him out. They have two heroes to get that like flying vision coming through. Not quite got the vision here on that spear. So close. And he spotted him out with that last jump. He's there we go. From there, they found him. He'll try and get himself out of there with the roll away. Found the strike, hold him in position, but OP and the gang jump forward. TP out, not successful. As OP picks up another killing spree now, and there's Tinker, tier one tower taken as well. They actually have like three heroes that can fly and scout through the trees. The Monkey King's jumping through, the Wyvern using his flight, and as well as the Night Stalker. So finding, hiding those trees is a hard option. Leave the haze, but Boker as well. Hunting through the Ren jungle, S triple C is there. Still rather hard for this side to lock down. S triple C. Can feel very free with his movements unless they get the silence. Success. Not quite going to get it though. Has Triple C quick with the reaction? Sees them rotating in with that ward that they have on the river. Starting to get his farm on though. Level 13 already on the storm. Tied up with the Tinker. Just about a thousand net worth though. Tied up in levels that is. Still. Well. Just the 15 minute mark coming up, 8 for 7 at the moment. Newbie immediately looking to smoke up. Ravage is there. Wanting to utilize KP and the gang. They're making a beeline straight for XXS on this bottom lane. He is all alone. Does not have a TP, so XXS. He's looking pretty dead here. See if he can play his way out of it, but it certainly looks to be unlikely. The rupture's upon him. He'll be closing in. Silence. He'll try and turn a fight. But with the boulder smash holding him in the blood right, it'll be a quick, easy. Kill for newbie there off the back of the smoke. And that's uh, killing spree going for Mugi too, so pushes him closer and closer toward that radiance, which will be very nice versus Lycan, because like the panel said, you know, this is a game where Lycan wants to go book. You pretty much kind of need to versus Rupture, and having that extra radiance miss rate can be super useful versus those books and those summons. Q, part the top, as we see, this is like what a lot of Winter Wyverns and Aoi used to do a lot when he would be playing those... Uh, lane pushing supports, just goes top, constantly throws the lane in with Splinter Blaster, whatever hero it may be. As you say, we definitely can expect to see Newbie turn turn the pressure up once that Bloodstone's on S triple C. Yeah, Bloodstone and Radiance That's will be big timers. Out. They've got the mech though, and now we see KP farming a, I think this Aquad Ancient stack with Mugi here. The big injection of gold going their way. Moogie actually gets the majority of these last hits, he will have the Relic. So I wonder if they're going to prioritize giving them to him. Oh no, they actually give it to KP. Okay. So they want his Hood instead, it seems to be more important for them. And there's also another ma massive Ancient stack too. So Nubi is really playing the Economy War in this one. 
I mean, they're playing versus Tinker, so they understand they need to be keeping very far ahead in order to be able to press that high ground eventually. OP, getting the first part of that Aghanims. IG may be wanting to smoke up, but Boca has one ready to pop. They've got Darkness. They've got the level 4 Wolves on line 2 to scout if Burning wants to throw them ahead so they can try to get those jumps with Vision. Let's see what they can find. As you say, yeah, the Wolves leading the way into the jungle. They are spotted though. Faith did see those Wolves coming up with the Sentry where and they, they have, scan. and they scan right away. So they do see that smoke movement kind of happening with that Wolf reveal. See if Provoker can still get the jumping. KP's in the neighborhood. Has got Ravage. Not the hero you want to go on. Absolutely not. Any fight close to this tower will result in Newbie being able to respond if they so wish. IG at least will take this tier one tower in the mid lane down. Yep. The tower, more money into the pocket of Burning, pushing him closer towards that level three Necro. One recipe to go as he hits the amount for the level two. Big slowdown in the last three or four minutes. Everyone just content with trying to get their next items online. The hood. On Tide, Radiance's well, Relic is picked up on the Bloodseeker. Bloodstone is about to be done on Storm, so big item timings for Newbie coming out here. Well, IG doesn't have anything as massive coming out that close. It's the Book 3 is the only real one. Yeah, but it's still and the half, he's so, halfway. But, yeah, for sure. He's still got a bit of time to go. But a little still. more than halfway, actually. Kaka? Let's be a little careful here again. If XXS can close the gap, Regen rune for Esther, we'll see, with the Bloodstone being delivered. Maybe they'll try to make plays around that. It's It depends if they want to play with the Ravage or do they want to wait for the Bloodseeker Radiance. How do they gauge what's more important? I think the DD rune and the Regen Storm might want them to just force down this low tower. It's only 100 HP, so easy pickings for them. Esther, we'll see, picks it up. Burning, scouting them out with the Wolves, but there is a Sentry Wolf, Sentry Ward there, so they're able to notice that one. And they're going to start clearing that Ancient stack. Team Ancients. Kaka, and he has in, in him immediately. S triple C in the midst of it all. The ball, the smash, and the silence coming out to two. They'll look towards Boboka first. Already on the sidelines, though. OP starting to spam out the rockets. KP with the ravage connects onto three. Boboka safe for the time in by the cold embrace, but it's not enough. Boboka, he's finally down. Look at the first kill now. KP to be turned towards by XXS, burning, popping the ultimate. He's a little too low to dive. So newbie will keep themselves all alive there. Only Baboka to fall, <laughs> but definitely a great fight for newbie. They get the Bloodstone team. charge. He just jumps in. He's ready to go. Bloodstone's there. He wants those charges. Yeah, he actually got his regen burnt as he went in, though. It was I thought he was trying to like jump in and then force him to use a bunch of spells and jump back and try to regen up and go in, but unfortunately loses that regen. But they do get at least Baboka, who doesn't actually have his ulti skilled up yet, so they don't really want to take a fight too much on IG, at least with that talisman. They just want to be going for those pickoffs and pressure. For now, Aghanims, 480 gold away on the Tinker. That's their. That's another big one that actually enables them to take fights. Because, like we said during the draft and all that, newbies team fight is stronger. It's all, all about the Tinker getting those items in order to Dude. enable them. It was stepped out a little too far, Kaka. And what's on charge? That's very very nice for us, Triple C. Already up to the 14. Picking these up very quickly. Make success. Just to be careful still, newbie in the neighborhood. But uh, yeah, this, this Axe Tinker is really going to change a lot in these fights. Uh, SCCC and of course Moogie, very unlikely to build any sort of true strike or BKB at this stage. So that laser is going to cause a lot of issues for these two. They try and run around the fight if, yeah. if they don't control the Tinker. But as we've yeah. said, there's a lot of ways that Moogie can look to try and prioritize getting OP out of these fights. They just don't have a way to find him is the first thing. They need some way to get the vision on him. So I think getting those like Guardian Greaves, the pipe on Tide Hunter, and then trying to go for like a Blink Dagger, I think could be really nice to get into the back line. But during this now, IG, they use their book three. They're going for that Roche. They have the sustain with the Cold Embrace too. Nubi does not have Ravage online. All they have is Magnetize. They do spot like they're it trying out. to go for it though. Radiance is online for Moogie too. Right as well, but Burning still is outside of the radius of the Blood Right, so he should get away with this. They're heading towards it. Pavoka though drops the ultimate straight away. The battle is strike as well. Connects onto three, holds newbie back. So Burning gets the space to finish off Roche, grab the Aegis, and yet nothing the newbie can do to put a stop to that one. Ig, getting the objective. Aghanim's finished up too, so fighting is very hard into that tinker yeah. with that vision advantage that Ig will mostly have in the engagements. With the, you know, with the wolves, as well as the monkey king jumping around and the night soccer nighttime. 
smoke to be picked up on the side of Newbie. We'll see if they want to go for any sort of play. It will be into the Aegis. But they do have that Ravage. They have their ultimates. They're drawing the line. Telling, it looks like they're telling us Triple C to push out and they're going to smoke near him, expecting IG to make a move and they're going to catch them during that. That's exactly what it looks like it's going to be happening. Moogie. The Wolves are actually burning right now by Radiance. Yeah, they don't realize what's going on, but it's still that Triple C jumps in to get the Suns off to do immediately trying to go for a success. They get themselves out of the blood right. Moogie trying to finish off the nice talker. They'll get one now. They'll turn towards more burning, trying to get Kaka, but the Ravage comes out. KP holds it back. There's the Winter's Curse. KP beating deep into Moogie. Moogie kept alive by the Grave. The Grave is perfect. Alive. Faith keeps him alive. Maboka's going to look to try and finish him off, but no. Faith managed to bring down Maboka. Newbie. They lose Kaka, but the rest of them kept alive there by some immaculate play from Faith. So not only just the Grave there, but his Weave. The Weave ended up adding up so much when Moogie had an incredible amount of armor just to take that increased damage there from everybody. Very well Same. executed fight by Newbie. Absolutely, Faith just keeping his cool. We'll see it again here. I mean, S-Triple-C, this man, he wants to rumble straight in each and every time as soon as there's an opportunity to jump forward. Getting XSS out of the fight is huge. S-Triple-C knows there's no chance of being silenced. KP not holding back with the Ravage. And then look at this. So close to Moogie being brought down, but Faith at the last moment there with the Grave gets it. And as you say, with the Weave already on Baboka, Baboka tried to jump, chase him down, but the Dazzle had enough physical to bring him out. And Newbie staying strong amidst that fight. And of course, great news for S Triple C. The Bloodstone charges continue to rise up to 17 now. As he's starting to close in on having the Orchid complete as well. This is what we were talking about the core matchups, right? The Bloodseeker versus the Lycan. He gets ruptured. He's very scared to do stuff in the fight. The Storm can access into the back to find that Wyvern, find that Tinker. Oh, look at this, though. Faith could be in trouble. He's being gone upon. Kaka trying to save him. The Boulder Smash does it. It's three. It's three. He will still be chased down. Faith has the chance to get the Grave off. Turns around with a four man weave. Faith is going to be chased down, though. They will dive up. They will find the kill. We'll see if Newbie can do anything with their, the armor of IG ticking down low. Every time the Ravage is expended, IG needs to just make those kind of plays. Just get full out aggressive, take, obje take objectives with that Lycan. And that's what they're doing. And understandably, Newbie without that Dazzle, not having the confidence to do anything about that push. Tier 2 gone. Moogie, see if he finds anything at the moment. IG still all up on the, in the top jungle. OP still very much with the lead in farm this game. 1300 on the Tinker. Going for the BKB. That's one, way. Short. That's one way to deal with the Storm Spirit. You have to rush an early BKB. It hurts you a bit, of course, because you don't want to, you never want to have that on a Tinker, but you need it in these type of games. You see Moogie going for the Mantis style next into the BKB, I would assume, to deal with that laser, to deal with uh, everything that the Tinker does dish out. See what the plan is. They've got the smoke again. If Newbie wants to try and go for another attempt at a catch. Arcade. Also have the Orchid too. That can be very nice to, to stop the Winter Wyvern from getting the Curse off or the Cold Embrace. Q now does have a Glimmer Cape though, so do they actually have any reveal on I mean, They do have Sentry Wards, but no type of dust, and it's only on the Dazzle. But they have to make sure they do have that reveal in Burning. During all this, has his Wolves M clicked onto S Triple C, so they see exactly. What I mean, he's, he's, he's going in. He sees Baboka revealing himself as straight away S Triple C finds him in the tree line. Baboka cannot afford to poke his head out like that. If S Triple C is anywhere near, with the amount of Bloodstone charges he has, they're he building can up. Easily close that gap. Yeah, it's 18 charges. That was. They knew he was there too. The Wolf was literally standing on him for that entire time. Baboka just trying to push the waves out as much as possible and getting getting punished. This is sort of turning out to the game that I was hoping it was going to be. Both mid laners just absolutely performing. S Triple C versus OP. This Tinker versus Storm. Both at the top of the net worth. As we saw there, an opportunity that you cannot even try and tease underneath the nose of S Triple C. He will be straight on top of it. Big discrepancy is that you know the Tide Hunter is getting you know good farm, good team fighter, while Night Stalker. Starts to fall behind. That's what happens when it's played as a core. Either you're getting lots of kills and you're keeping your momentum going, or it does start to stop and slow down. Darkness they do need to find Faith now, though. I mean, Faith, that's the one that they're happy taking out at the start of it. Immediately with OP coming in, they'll burst down the Dazzle. They will want to try and find something more. They do get the slow onto KP, ready to try and chase him down. KP does have Ravage. There it comes out on his death. Blood Right is going to connect on. Can't connect on everyone. That's going to send up for S Triple C. Can't going to come immediately in. Rukong Shaman comes out from the side of Avoka, but there's the Boulder.
Super Smash holding back the Monkey King. Newbie have lost two though. IG on the way out looking to disengage. Off the back of what was a very nice little combo there from Newbie. Didn't quite find the kills that they may have hoped for. They got burning, nothing more. But we saw there, I mean, if that Ravage and Blood Right didn't come out, that could have got a lot messier for Newbie. So they do force IG back. Moogie needs to get a BKB. I don't think Manta's even the right one before that. And okay, yeah, he just changes switches it. it up. He's listening to you, Fox. He, he walked, he like tried to walk into that fight, ate like a, two rockets and a laser, or maybe just two rockets, and he was already too low after running into Monkey King ult. So in order to, for him to get into those fights, definitely needs that. But the combo there, the Ravage with the Blood Right is super threatening if they're able to get that one successfully versus IG. So next item of choice for the Tinker will be the Shivas. And there's something else I, I'd like to point out too, because OP does it every single game, and I see a lot of Tinker, Tinkers okay. actually straight away. Is he gets the armor at level 10, and he also gets the health. The health is more common, but the armor one people don't really gauge on. But in this game, there's a Storm Spirit, so you know you're going to probably get jumped on in a lot of these situations. So that bonus armor is very relevant in these games. Like, 8 int is, it can be good, but it's, it's only 8. eight like 6 armor when you're actually getting like gone on is much more important. And he always does this. Almost always. I wouldn't be surprised as well if we don't see a uh, newbie try and look for the fight until they have these three these three BKBs. Or so the two BKBs at least that they're working on, yeah. yeah. You see a movie. They absolutely need them. Yeah, the, the laser is way too much of an issue. The rockets as well, it's too much damage. And now there's an arcane rune on the Tinker too. So that can be really devastating for the next fight if he's able to stay away from everything. And of course, on the other side of things, IG, they certainly will want him to be fight, fighting before those BKBs come out. Yeah. Right now it's no Ravage for 20 seconds too, so they're trying to capitalize on that. Knowing that the they bottom. still have some downtime, but now Bloodseeker does have that BKB finished up. Baboka has got the Wukong's command back online. That second point in it as well. That boosted armor certainly can make the difference. This could be scary right now for IG. Be fresh BKB finished up. If they're yeah, Baboka's got the vision of them here. Out of the rockets, the lasers onto four. Moogie pops the BKB. Look at what's burning. The Blood Rocket X burning. He's stuck. As well, X Triple C moving forward. There's the Ravage. KP holding them in place. They take down Burning. Provoke on the back lines looking to get the weak ones to come out. I will break down Faith. OP immediately TPing out of this one. He'll get himself back to safety. But S Triple C, he's in with KP. Looking for Provoker. The silence connects. Cold embrace for Q buying some time, but it's not enough. The damage from the Blood Bright goes through. Gets the double kill for Moogie. Again, OP's back in with the laser spam, trying to force Newbie back. It's doing enough. It's Newbie forced back rune. up to the high ground. That arcane rune, but the Tidehunter gets in perfect position for the Ravage. And they isolate Burning. He's unable to do pretty much anything in the fight. That's the that's the issue, is with that rupture. He gets ruptured, he cannot do anything. And again, we're seeing the difference that that BKB on Moogie makes. He's yeah. certainly able to stick around in the fight. I believe gets out at least a couple of blood rights through the duration. The silence does the work. These Bloodstone charges, they are constantly going up and up and up for S Triple C. And yeah, we'll see it again here. There's a very good positioning too. IG are uh, uh, both on that high ground getting the four-man laser on the start, but yeah, it's Burning who's just unable to do anything in these fights. This gets brought down very quickly. And we saw there as well a bit of an interesting interaction that will certainly work against IG's lineup. When they're throwing out that laser and then the Winter's Curse, there's everyone's missing. So suddenly yeah, it does nothing. Point. It holds them in position, but the synergy is, is working against IG. Yeah, they don't really no have... No damage is done. It's the, the... If they curse the Bloodseeker hitting somebody, then the physical damage is there. But, yeah, of course, if the laser is there, it doesn't, it doesn't count. But anyone else... If the Bloodseeker gets cursed on him, they don't really have, like, physical heroes. It's the Storm is the only one who's really doing the right click. Devil damage. DD on X success. He, as well, going for BKBs. BKBs almost expected all around this game. Yep. Baboka. Still looking towards his own. S Triple C is getting out of control with he the Bloodstone charges though. Is. 21 with the BKP, and you look at Burning's net worth too. He has he has been stagnated for quite a while because of what happens in the team fights. He never is able to survive, never able to really do anything because he just gets ruptured. It's a very hard interaction to deal with as a Lycan. Again, Roshan is back up. Both teams with definite interest in taking it, and in fact. Burning's heading into the pit. Straight in. He's able to kill it at a relative pace. Yeah, he probably will have to expend the book, though, if he wants to do that. They do have, I believe, the 
Solar Crest? No, okay, just Medallion under Boko to help that speed up too. And Ravage literally just came back online for KP. Oh, and Nubi's making the move in. They don't have Blink hey. yet on KP, but they're they're oh. defensively weaving up. They're making this go. They're ready to run in and go ahead. Triple C zips in immediately. Looking for Birdie, possibly can be grabs Birdie back. The ball is supposed to Birdie getting bursted down low. The corner bridge is there for Q. The Ravage takes him out though. That's burning down for 50 seconds. Oh my They've lost God. three as Nubi just move in. These BKBs, as soon as the, both heroes become immune to magic, they just run in. Instantly target burning, rupture him up, fight one right from there. Getting absolutely crazy, and oh, 19 man. to 13, 8k gold lead now for Newbie. And it's Aegis and Cheese on a Storm Spirit who already has 24 Bloodstone charges. The best Aegis carrier in Dota with all of this to, on his arsenal now. It's getting scary, scarier and scarier for IG. It's becoming the Tinker, tinker yeah. versus the world. It, it really is, is really completely is. getting shut down. XXS is an offlane Night Stalker, unable to have that kind of impact that we Look could see again. from a lot of offlaners. I mean, who needs the blink on KP where you just have SCCC zipping in, finding burning, and despite Q's best efforts with the cold embrace, there's just too much magical flying, visit, flying through. They still burst him down. And Straight into the pit, no messing around. Full-blown defensive weave, plus Guardian Greaves, plus Pipe. They're actually so resistant to all the damage that's coming out. Look at like that. the Wukong's command gets completely countered by weave, even though it doesn't do a crazy amount of damage anyway. As Triple C throws his arms it. in there. Right, he's having a great game. He only died that one time in the mid lane, and ever since then it's oh, been... Oh, and he's nearly got an Aghanims. crushing it. He's nearly... He's got it. Yeah, he's got it finished. Aghanims is out here for the Storm Spirit. Oh, we love this. This is... He was one of the ones that... I want to say almost like kind of debuted it when we saw that like three or four man pull in several different tournaments that he did have. I mean, this is going to be so hard for IG to deal with. I mean, we saw there if S Triple C can continue to make those sort of initiations, how do you deal with this Ag Storm Spirit nearly level 25 as well? Getting absolutely out of control. They're they're smoking up, but that ward, that nice little cute ward by IG actually sees them smoke. So now they're all going to get back to their base, and it's just going to be a little bit of wasted time for newbie while XSS continues pushing out top since he's like, okay, if they're going to smoke from bottom and make their way all the way top, it's a heavy committal for just a Night Stalker at this point. They are pinging him out, though. S Triple C does have a lot of mana to work with, so if they actually can get relatively close to him, he can probably zip from that mid lane and get pretty close. There's a DD here as well. You want to grab their hands in it, and S Triple C says, yes, please. He can close the gap, the he gets the kill, and he's straight up. There he goes, finds Baboka. Yeah, Kaka started to make the way up there to find anyone who's positioned because they saw everybody else kind of bail to their base, hoping that they catch one, and they do. They get Baboka. Another tower taken as well for Newbie as they move in on the bottom lane. It's getting getting very hard for them to deal with what Newbie's got. With all that heavy team fight, IG's just really struggling to fight versus these, these two BKBs. And we know how well a, a stack tinker can hold the high ground, but the thing is, we've seen, you know, newbie, they have ways of jumping up. When it gets to pushing up to the high ground, there's nothing to really stop S Triple C from just going straight in, catching out OP, and then if he takes that tinker away from IG's lineup, the push becomes relatively easy. For yeah, I mean, it's he's the only one right now, really. It's, he's 18,000 net worth, the next on his team is 10,000, and it's the Lycan who's countered completely by the Bloodseeker rupture. And now it's KP does have the Blink Dagger finished up on the Tide Hunter, so he can just blink in and st get the fight going. Blink in Ravage, catch one or two. And the fight will be very difficult for IG to take with just that one BKB on Tinker and burning it. Nowhere near anything of the sort, building up toward an AC next. Here we have it, newbie. See so if they want to force the issue, I mean, at the same time, they are going to be feeling very comfortable with their position. Oh yeah, the pits, this is perfect. They know Burning is completely shut down. They're like, we have, I mean, this is their game to lose. There's, they're in an extremely comfortable position and it's really hard for IG to really come back. It's gonna, become, it's gonna have to come through mistakes. S Triple C as well, as we saw with the level 25, of course, taking the extra duration on the Vortex to really maximize on his potential with his Aghanims. I mean, essentially, you know, they've got multiple, they've, uh, they've got a couple of Ravages now. Yeah. On Ubi's lineup. The Blood right is no joke either versus majority of IG's lineup. It's, like we said, just the Tinker as the Magic Community, and now it's 90% of the map control is Newbie's way. He's getting very deep, aggressive wards down, just farming up the whole map. But Boca's trying to find anything on the map. Look where he's farming. He's farming a medium camp, trying to put down some wards, do whatever he can to get that farm. He's but been working that, on this BKB newbie. for so long. Yeah. 
very, very far behind the majority of the cores on IG's lineup in comparison to Newbie. Dyer, they will they scan, scan it. They know he's two. there. They're they coming up hunting up. up in the tree line. Should be fine, though. And uh, indeed, will get himself just far enough away so that Newbie can't quite spot him out. Yeah, they're suffocating IG completely, though. The map is all of Newbie's now. Aegis does get reclaimed, but there's still the cheese, I believe, or did they actually end up using that one? Uh, I think they give it to Moogie. They did give it to Moogie, okay. Me. And uh, as we said, no real reason to rush it, as Triple C playing it safe. He's finished off a Lincoln spin now as well, so with the Lincoln... Pretty much six slotted game. almost. He is absolutely good to go. Can, up, can change the boots for something later on. Eventually get that Bloodthorn as well, yeah. which would be nice. What is the plan for IG? They are almost certainly getting to the territory where they're hoping that Newbie make a massive blunder on the attempt to go up to high ground. It's it's so hard for them right now. OP's trying to farm this Hex, which could be the one thing that they have to deal with SCCC, but SCCC has already got the Lincolns finished out to block at least the initial Hex surprise that's going to be coming out. So they have to just, yeah, they have to hope for extensions and let the Tinker laser rockets start building up. Burning still been doing a good job with his bolts, just scouting out wherever Newbie is, but you know, it's still too hard for them to take fights around all that vision. As you said, it's just so incredibly poor at this stage of the game, the Lycan. Yeah. And Kaka's Earth Spirit nearly, nearly catching up to Burning and at this stage. It's getting harder and harder. The, the difference is becoming more and more massive. Last 10 minutes, it's been all Newbie. Almost, almost 20,000 gold lead. Oh, I like his thinking. Boboka, queuing up the rapier. I mean, <laughs> definitely at this stage, it's the item to go for. Oh, he might be able to get a courier snipe here, though. Oh, well, there like, it is. Ah, a couple of wards gone. Two. Uh, S Triple C's like. On the hunt, though. Does Boboka get away with this one for free? I mean, S Triple C has already made one big zip. It's on the prowl. Oh, turns into a tango on the high ground. Looks like it'll be okay. S Triple C is going to stop hunting. I hope, I hope he goes for it. I hope he gets it. The Rapier <laughs> Monkey King has a lot of potential. He's still a lot, long, long way away from it, though. <laughs> I mean, he's staying there. He's oh, got oh, a TP. <laughs> so, they also, yeah, so Nubi also has a 30,000 experience lead. He's not going to get a Rapier, Owen. He's just going to kill you. Is he all right? Is he is still in the booth, Baboka? I mean, they're, they can't leave their base. They're completely trapped. Versus this Storm Spirit with 25 Bloodstone charges. They have no map control whatsoever. They're getting vision with the Wolves and stuff, but they can't really make anything of it. They're going for This is what we call the Desperation Smoke. But it's also with the Hex first picked up, so that's the Surprise Hex. True. Can they actually find the Storm Spirit and pick him off instantly? It's going to be hard. I mean, AP's it would be such a massive the area. kill if they can. Wolves are on, and they have the vision. As Triple C. They want it, but Very everybody's close. in the area. The Dazzle's They've got to in the pop back, that Lincoln's. Too. Pops down the first remnant. There's the Lincoln's pop. OP does get in with a hex. BKB pops as well. OP trying to do it. KP comes in with a ravage. OP, he's got a TP out of there. Realizes it's time for him to get up there. The zip forward. Two man pull. Two man vortex brings them back into the combo of the Earth Spirit. That's going to be two down. Immediate buyback from Q. XX is popping the BKB, trying to get himself out of there. But SCCC zips forward. Takes down another double kill. The Sword Spirit Q's there with the Winter's Curse. Will hold them back. Provides time for Burning to get out of there at least, but Q, he's going to be taken down a second time. Triple kill for S, triple God, C. Like 29 Bloodstone charges now, 71.9 mana Drum roll and applause, S, triple C's loving it. Newbie's feeling super confident now. And absolutely every reason to be feeling that way. Jump four from KP. Push up to Burning, S, triple C, ready to zip into the base, looking for the action, does get hexed up. Boulder smashes down to Burning, can they keep Burning alive? There's the laser. Burning to back up. OP spam enough to keep Newbie away from finishing off the kill onto the Lycan. Objectives. Hit the buildings. Yeah, for the fortification. As we talked about, OP's Tinker 8 can do so much in terms of slowing down these pushes. They just need to jump on him once, though. They'll get the tier 3, but they won't get the barracks. They're still playing. You know, they're, they're very confident in the game with the way that they're, you know, they're acting and everything with the, the chat wheel spam, but they're still playing it very smart. You know, this is such an important game. 25k gold lead. We're gonna take so a look at this it. fight. I mean, they made the best attempt to go, you know, OP straight in with the BKB. He just gets instantly ruptured and he has to, he just, he has to get out of the fight. And he from knows there, that he can't stick around. 
from there is just way too hard. Beautiful pull, though, by SCCC. But it's still so hard, you know, even if they are able to somehow lock down SCCC and get, like, burst damage on them, the Dazzle's just chilling in the back, ready for the grave every single time. Certainly a cute little uh, call from Q to make to get that buy back in. I think if he didn't come in with that play, Burning almost certainly would have been dead. Yeah. So offering up that, that fact that he goes down twice to keep Burning in the game. Little things like that that can keep IG holding on, but they indeed are so far behind. 42 minutes coming up, 26,000 net worth lead as SCCC just continues to go crazier and crazier in this final game of the series. Yeah, and now they even have the Lotus Orb on Kaka to deal with the Hex. I mean, you have to remove that one always. Full Bloodthorn now finished too on SCCC. It's That's insane. The advantage is, is becoming it. Impossible for IG to deal with it, and Baboka's just running around as a tree in the enemy jungle. I mean, he's just trying to keep, like, he's trying to find some farm, cut waves wherever he can, but every time he shows, he will get jumped by the Storm Spirit. And everybody else on IG is literally just trapped in the base. They, they can't go anywhere. He has to be careful. There's, there is that newbie ward there as well. If he comes towards that other camp. So they give, they actually buy the tome, give it a Moogie, and Moogie's now level 25 for that. 100% uptime on Blood Rite. 5 second cooldown, 6 second silent duration. And Kaka's, Kaka's on the prowl. He's looking for Baboka somewhere. He's just trying to roll through trees constantly. I think they did see him underneath they that did, wall. They did, right? They yeah. did for a second. Kind of leaving him be for now. Just maintaining control around the Roche Pit. IG. I don't know what IG can do in this game. I, I really don't know how they can take any of this. Because now with Aegis and Cheese, it's going to be impossible for them to touch newbie. They can certainly stall a little bit as we've seen with the March spam and such from Tinker. But newbie it How do they kill anyone? That, they can stall but they can they can kill maybe the supports, but these guys have so many beefy frontliners that it's pretty much impossible. Uh, he's just back in the hands of S Triple C. Mugi has the cheese. Starting to cap out as well. We've got Cheese Watch still on the Earth Spirit as well. Yeah. Two cheeses here for the side of Newbie. They'll look to taking the shrines. Hope he's trying to continue at least some of this split push to at least force some reaction. I mean, it's so scary and hard for him to do so. Yeah. S Triple C being anywhere close to being in the neighborhood will make the play upon him. Newbie's being so patient, though. They're still just like, okay, let's clean out the shrines, make sure our lanes are pushed out properly, and then we can try to make that move. But still, just trying to clear out the vision, keep that suffocation going, get that. Massive advantage, almost 30k gold lead, getting closer and closer to the 40,000 experience lead. Baboka has got that demon edge. He's getting there slowly but surely. He knows the win condition. Needs that rapier. Will he get the chance to finish it off? I mean, at this pace, with newbies, you say, playing as safe as they are, it could just about happen. He might get it, but he is very susceptible to dying, Owen. <laughs> Yeah, it would be a question how long he's able to keep it in his own hands once he has it. Yeah. That's for sure. Oh, Kaka actually spots the Boca. And S Triple C makes the jump across the map. And there is no escape for that man. Straight down, another charge into the Bloodstone. 30 now. Score. Oh, and a regen. How convenient. I'm getting a so now it's 45 minutes in. We need to have the double ca first double catapult wave starting to come out. Maybe newbie will time to push with this one. As it looks like they're doing so. Boogie going bottom to deal with that push coming out. Top isn't really in the best situation. But S Triple C jumps up there and he finishes that up. Wants all these three waves to push in heavily with these with this massive double wave that comes out at the 45 minute mark. IG just still unable to leave the base with three or four of their heroes. Burning now finally gets a way to get some farm down toward bottom. Gets, the, gets his Ogre Club, finished up the AC, so he's trying to build toward that BKB. I mean, they just can't do anything at all at this stage, IG. Until that, maybe when the BKB is there and burning, if he gets super lucky with the crits under his ultimate form. It's still super unlikely. Just so much, so much heal, so much sustain, and they can just rupture him, right? It's, it is just so hard for them in this game. The darkness is summoned by XXS. Newbie. When are they going to try and push up? They've got Agent and Cheese. They might just go try to force it soon. He's starting to play around with it now. First Lutasorb up on the Storm. Gonna bounce back. 
Another wave and Baboka looking to hold them back with a boundless strike. Laser starting to be spammed out. They're forced out of the fortification. S triple C zips forward. Again, the lasers and the rockets slowly but surely forcing newbie slightly back. They won't quite get the melee racks. But, but again, as we can see, very little damage as a whole being taken by the side of newbie. They're back in. They are going to be able to claim yeah. it. Yeah, even throwing the BKB usage. Just to make sure they get that rack finished up. 34k lead. Now they're going to push out that bottom wave. An incredible lead. IG's looking to try to get some pickups though on the back of this while they're retreating, but nope. Newbie's way too quick to get out. Yeah, the chances of that happening incredibly slim at this stage. Triple C may even just find Baboka into the banana, brings him in. S Triple C, another charge as he takes down Baboka. He really wants that rape here, but he's not getting it this stage. The head shakes, the wow's coming out from Newbie. They know they've got this one. They're feeling super they're confident. Ju they're just enjoying the moment. Yeah. Moonshard now being consumed by S Triple C. Like he's just trying their best to try to delay it, but delaying the inevitable for sure. That's what we see. Tries to make it in. Lincoln has been popped. Does get Hex up a KP. In with the full back ravage. The battle smash comes down on two OP pops. The BKB trying to keep them back. OPT being back to base as Moogie's going for a moment. Oh, now clean him up. There's no buyback either. Much. Tinker's out for 80 seconds. Burning being forced back. As IG back towards the base, Winter's Curse does come out onto the yeah, Titan, but GG is called. Newbie take the series, they'll be moving on. And with a very, very convincing game three there. SCCC on the storm. Again, these final picks of the drafts doing everything for the team. There was just no way they could control this guy. We saw them put pressure on him at the start in the mid lane. It just wasn't enough. I think since he got the Bloodstone, I'm pretty he didn't die again, did he? Only died no, the he only once died again. The yeah, he only in died the during lane. the lane. Beautiful performance by Newbie. The Bloodseeker just constantly rupturing, burning in the fights. Burning literally could not do anything in this game. It was pretty much all up to OP and the rest of them to try to make space for him, but it's just too hard. The core matchups, as we mentioned, from Newbie were way too strong, and they played very well around it. They pressured burning in the laning phase a bit with the Tide Hunter, with the Dazzle, and afterwards they just started accruing more and more of an advantage, and that big Roche fight just lets them. You see the, the true power of their heroes just being able to jump in, kill, kill like everybody with the Ravage, as well as the Earth Spirit Magnetize. I mean, yeah, Newbie, this series is looking absolutely incredible. Yeah, that was, that was a really good draft and just great execution. You know? I mean, the one game that they, they fell down on, of course, being the, the Drow Strat. And, yeah. You know, that's something that we see a lot of teams sometimes pull out, maybe they're getting a little ahead of themselves, feel that they have the edge in terms of performance, and IG, very impressively, of course, shut them down in that one. But yeah. overall, the play, the level of play from these players, and as you say, coming into this last game, and as we saw in the first game, the drafting as well, yeah. incredibly on point, and it just didn't leave IG any routes to get themselves out of it. OP on the Tinker, he was in a great place, but maybe they were kind of putting too much emphasis on him with that final pick. You know, as I said, I was excited to see what he could do, but just the whole team around him, it, it wasn't there to achieve anything. And it was not the last, last pick as the Tinker, so it gave Newbie that opportunity to get the Storm Spirit, which is the best counter versus the Tinker. IG actually banned the Ember, because Ember is also one of those great options to punish a Tinker, so it's very understandable as to why they would do that, but Newbie, this time around, saving that, saving their core hero for that last pick is very crucial, just, just changing up the way that they were drafting. Absolutely, and I would not be surprised if we see teams being very noting about the, the SCCC Storm in future drafts. You've yeah. got to be careful if you let that man get his hands on it, as he will blow you away. But there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Newbie will move on in the upper bracket, knocking IG down. 2-1 ends the series. But for now, back to the panel to hear what they have to say about that incredible finisher from Newbie. Thank you, Odie. Incredible is the word. Absolutely outrageous. Newbie are indomitable and are in the upper bracket finals. A full three-game series takes them there. And now introductions are in order. I can see smiles creeping onto your faces at home and mine too when I found out my panel. Introductions, let's do it. Joining me first of all, of course, it is none other than Mr. Samel. You even brought a blazer. Yeah. You came prepared, I respect I that. Did. So, of course, in his first year of competitive Dota, he went on and won a TI at the age of 16. After that, of course, FN Jesus on the end. We've seen what he was capable of. I think it was a top six at TI5. You're right. And then, of course, we've got um, Blitz. So, moving on, uh, let's do some analysis. Oh, sorry, wait, was it Nexon? Yeah, there was a Nexon championship there. Yeah, I mean, I respect it. I will respect it, dude. But we should actually respect Newbie and actually do some analysis, just very, albeit, might have to be a bit brief. So, Mail, they just started talking about Storm Spirit. 
you're no stranger to the hero. Uh, does SCC spirit want to fear? Uh, I think the Storm game was pretty nice uh, that game because they didn't yeah. have any lockdown on IG at all. So, uh, yeah, it was just a pretty much free Storm game, I think. So what makes it free? Just there's no pressure on him. Yeah, there's like uh, the lane is not an issue for Storm, like which is a bigger part of like how to shut down the hero. Basically, like mm. you have to put a lot of early game pressure on the hero right. if you like give him the good start. So there's no, no crypt tonight to that. Yeah. Interesting. Well, we saw him rock and roll it. Uh, outside of that, I think you know I heard a lot of people still not convinced by the Wyvern. Now we've seen Wyvern across the the, the majority of TI. They saw it drafted here, Blitz. What, what do you make of this hero and its place in the draft? I think that people are drafting it as a lane pusher from afar, as well as the fact that uh, it counters a lot of these physical damage dealing cores, sure. but at the same time, it does feel a little bit slow. Mm. FNG, what do, you, what do you make of all this then? You're the spirit from SSC, SCCC, the, the, my favorite name of all the names. I mean, the whole draft for Newbie was pretty good. Yeah. They got Dazzle for saves, they got Tide Hunter for team fights, Earth Spirit, Roman Hero, sure. Bloodseeker for lane dominance, and then Storm Spirit. Really good hero. They don't have any lockdown. They have yeah. tight in the team. So basically, if you jump on Storm still, tight gonna counter initiate and you're gonna win team fight. So it's basically gonna be easy game for a newbie if they don't make big mistakes and they didn't. And uh, with, that, with that all said, I do think we could get a little bit of a more in-depth breakdown. And no one better for the job than Purge. Kevin, you're back in your usual spot. What have you got for us this time? Well, uh, I wanted to talk a bunch about Monkey King. Uh, he's kind of an interesting hero right now. Um, he's been nerfed in a lot of ways, and uh, IG played him in a bit of an interesting way. He grabbed the Bounty Rune right at the start of the game, gets an Orb of Venom to combo with his Boots of Speed. Now, one of the big nerfs that came to the hero was that he has very low armor, and he was probably expecting to maybe be able to bully the Tidehunter a little bit, but unfortunately for him, there was a Dazzle there. Does a lot of physical damage, which gives Boboko a really tough time, especially when the Tidehunter pulls out Gush which also lowers armor. So what happens sometimes for Monkey King is you can get into this really bad position where your hero doesn't actually accomplish that much offensively, um, and it puts you in a bad spot. Um, luckily, though, Boboko is a fantastic player. He later ends up uh, picking up some uh, bonus damage with Jingu Mastery and turning that into a double kill uh, towards the mid lane uh, shortly after zoning the tide under here. That, those kinds of heads-up plays can work out really well, but um, in a lot of cases, you won't be able to actually secure those kills or get those double initiations. So um, later on in the game, um, he was very vulnerable to heroes like Storm Spirit, Ember Spirit can easily kill trees. I'm just not super sold on the hero right now myself. Uh, I think Boboka is a fantastic player, but it definitely shows that in some cases, um, the hero has really limited teamfight contribution. I mean, in this case, he actually does end up uh, hiding here and interrupting the smoke gank, but uh, past that, um, he is always aiming for backline, things like that, but he's very easy to kill once targeted. So uh, not sold on him. I think he's one of the reasons that IG had a lot of trouble with this game, and hopefully we see some more buffs maybe. Perfect. Well, there you go. You did a bit of the Monkey King as well. It seemed like Boboka was saying, it might crop up. I'm a big fan of it. The nerfs did hit him hard, though. And from one side of the coin, we get to go and venture to the other. This time, it is time for a very happy KP in case he's standing by. Here we go, KP. How's the adrenaline feeling right now, now that you know you're guaranteed top three? Oh, I don't know. It's just, it just feels amazing. I don't know. I have no words. Like, it just feels good. Like, lo the last time I was here, I came 12th. So, yeah, it's a big jump. So, I don't know. I always feel bad making you guys sit here with me because you come straight out of the pods. We grab you. We say, sit down, pick up a microphone, and tell us how you feel. You're still, ha you still have the weight of these three games on you. So, how are you able to stay kind of in it for all three? Because that, that's, those are some long matches. Um, to be honest, I don't think any of us was were exhausted or anything. Mm -hmm. It's more maybe like a bit nerve wracking. Um, I don't know. I just felt, I just felt my teammates played really well, and I didn't do too much. I guess like I got carried kind of. You did. Yeah. You did a lot. Uh, I no, just feel did. like our, our team just played well together. I'd say. You did really well in the first game. weren't able to come through in the second game. So what kinds of lessons did you learn then that enabled you to come back so strong in game three? Uh, to be honest, we kind of knew what heroes exactly they were going to pick because we screamed with them a lot and we've picked Drow a lot as well. Um, we knew that Dark Seeker, uh, Dark Sea was going to come. We knew the the Bloodseeker was going to come. I guess we just we just had too many things to ban when we were playing Drow, um, like Alchemist, things like that. So yeah, I guess we just learned like a lot of things from the drafting. Mm -hmm. yeah. You've said in the past that this is a particularly good patch for you as a team. Why do you think that is, and how has that proven itself to be true? Uh, I think this patch is a patch where you can play anything. Mm -hmm. I'm sure everyone knows. 
um, for us, especially, I think we're not really like the other Chinese teams in the fact that we are really versatile. We can play a lot of different heroes. So I guess that's one of the pluses for us. Yeah. And how is your confidence level going up against LFY versus VP? Is it the same? Is it different? Yeah. I think I think to be honest, by now we're like really confident. We never would have thought that we would have gotten third, at least. Um, so yeah, I think we're just really confident right now. We're just gonna like just go at the games like without thinking about anything. Like no thinking about like being scared or anything. We're just gonna go. Just do what you know how to do. Yeah. And do it well. Yeah. Congratulations, KP. Thank you. Appreciate it. Back Thank to you guys. Casey. Thank you very much, Casey. Then you've got KP with a big smile on his face. Surprised himself that they have made it into top three. Now, Newbie, uh, a team that, of course, you are familiar with. I was wanting to know, what does it feel like to play against Newbie? They, they said that they have a bit of a different approach to the game than the other Chinese teams. I think uh, all of us on the team, we think like uh, of Newbie as a Western team, more of sure. oh. yeah, less of like Chinese team because the way they play, the way they use the map, and like. Mostly like individual players, they're like really talented. I think, as you said, like they can play a lot of things that other Chinese teams don't do, and we have like kind of similar uh, game style. Oh, really? Yeah. So like that caught of like kind of like a clash of a clash of yeah. both styles or the same style. Yeah. Interesting stuff. Now I am going to be picking your brains. I realize we are blitzing through this, but that's because we have so much to talk about about this next game. So FNG, I'm going to leave the kind of the final thoughts with you on this one. Newbie, Victor's upper bracket top three. Are you as surprised as KP was? Uh, to be honest, no. I think Newbie is kind of stronger than IG, but still, it's like 50-50 because uh, two teams, one region, and it's hard to predict who is going to win. Sure. But Newbie was stronger, especially in Z, best of three, but there is kind of chance that IG can beat still Newbie in next best of three or so. Yeah, it's just, it's, it does seem so unpredictable at this point in time. In fact, we know Dota, anything can be picked, any result can, you know, raise eyebrows. And I'm sure, Blitz, you are someone in that list. You are, you are equally surprised. I mean, Newbie, when we were talking about the group stages, you said they were, everyone was had eyes on them from the practice. Oh, for sure. I feel like, especially with the results recently, they were able to win a lot of lands. They won the, uh, the cup in Taiwan as well as beating us sure. in Galaxy Battles. It's really no surprise that they're as strong as they are. Uh, the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway is that it doesn't seem like they have the nerves that they did last year. It feels like this extra year of growth has been really good for the players going to another TI. Yes, they did poorly in the previous one, but I think doing poorly at a TI kind of resets your focus and sells yourself like, okay, we know what to take away from that. We've learned from our mistakes. Let's go into this a little bit more fresh. Okay. Well, I mean, our nerves actually are applicable in our next little bit. Not only were the players nervous walking onto stage, but I'm sure the Dota filmmaking community are going to be nervous as we once again show another piece of art. That's it. There have been so many submissions. They have been fantastic. All different plethora of different mediums to deliver some Dota cinema. And let's have another look at another one. There was an idea to bring together a group of remarkable heroes to fight the battles uh, between the ancients because they, they don't like each other very much. You call this a group of remarkable heroes? The dire ancient must fall and we will give our lives to defend ours. So that's it, huh? What, some sort of defenders of the ancient? We're all the hero of our own story. <laughs> There's only one way we get through this, working together. I might not know everything about this complex game, but I do know what is worth fighting for. What are we fighting for? MMR. <laughs> what have you done? You knew! Yes, I'm aware that I used the shrine. It was an accident. It was a misplay.
I'm under attack! <laughs> Who's coming for dinner? And all that does is provide us with a reminder that gaming communities are awesome. Not only are they filling stadiums, not only are they asking for autographs, not only are they creating beautiful pieces of work, they're also going ahead and, and doing battle in a very creative way. And uh, I mean, which one's everyone's favorite? I mean, I'm trying to think what mine was. I like the battle, like the Omni Knight, Last Man Standing kind of thing. Blitz, have you seen any of the, which one stood out to you? I think Dr. Zeus oh, he was, was cool. my personal yeah, favorite. Yeah. I thought that was the most creative overall. And I was like instantly when I saw it and I just enjoyed it a lot. What about you, Samuel? I like the Juggernaut one. The oh, what, where he gets the Arcana? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that, yeah, one, yeah. that one's pretty cool, I think. It's like a lot of effort put in that one. It's funny you should mention Arcana, actually, because uh, it might be that time, gentlemen. It might be that time, because I don't know if anyone is, else is aware at home, but it was ridiculously close. Like, you know, they're, they're close every year, right, FNG? They're pretty close. I mean, I already... What is count, you know? It's like, it was like 50% point, 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 zero, 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 yeah. five. And basically, everyone who will vote, he will make the final call. So you have to vote, guys. You, you have to vote. You really do have to vote. And actually, you know what? We have a special treat for you because we can show you just how close it was. Two fan favorite heroes have been put side by side, and you'll get to have a little look at this one now. Now, just to remind everyone of what it was between, let's see if we can show it to you on screen with this treat. That's right, 57 million votes, close to 58. I can hear groans from the crowd. Look at this. Let's, go, let's put it under the microscope. Let's get closer. Let's go, Pooch, my boy, go, yeah. Point zero zero eight percent Pudge and Rubik. Oh, uh, no, I'm not, I'm not, no, we're no, not, not high-fiving, we're not high-fiving no, high that. Pooch, nah. no, we're not no? Just to put it into perspective, over 57 million votes, and it is decided by 8,711 votes. Nice, I'm happy. I, well, I'm sure you are. You're your friend of Dendi's, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? There it is. There oh, it. I mean, I am the best push of the push of the push. You're a pudge gang. Yes. Well, I'm sure you'll be first to get your hands on that then. Yes. Okay. Well, that is that reveal done. I'm sure uh, I'm, they're going to shoot the messenger, and I'm going to be in trouble as I try and you know work my way around the key arena after that one. But that is the case. That is how it works. And now we can turn our attention to the next game. Forgetting about Pudge and his Arcana for a moment, now, now we can kind of turn to, well, a big one. It is the other upper bracket game. We have to see who is going to be meeting Newbie in that upper bracket. And the teams are crazy. Yes, indeed, it is none other than LGD Forever Young and Virtus Pro who will be doing battle. You can see them on your screens now. Flying the Western flag, VP on the other side, LGDFY. A 2-0 win versus TNC to get them there. And I think the first question has to be, who, do, who stands out more to you? Virtus Pro came into this tournament with high expectations. I think VP have been doing like super good this entire year. Virtus, like LFI just came out of nowhere, right? And they tend to like not do so good on the main stage. I mean, their first game was not that difficult. I can say that, I think. Like yeah. TNC is not a great... Fair. Oh, and like you're not scared of them really on the main stage, but I think for VP like they made to majors final, they made top four before that, so or not top four, I guess top eight. Mm. But yeah, I think VP is the better team here. Okay, well let's bring out the the team that surprised us all. 13-0 in the group stage, nearly undefeated. It is none other than LGD Forever Young. <laughs> 